When it comes to supplements and when we hear about fatty acids, we hear a lot about ratios. Yeah. Ratios of omega-3 to omega-6, yeah. and then also ratios of DHA and EPA. Yeah, yeah. Are those important? What should people know about that? I don't know how much. I'm an old professor in nutrition and has never had, uh, I, I never liked ratios very much because, let me give you an example. If you look at the omega-6, omega-3, and say let's make a ratio and the ideal ratio will be two to one or whatever sure. number. Then you could have the ideal ratio getting too, far too little of both of the components, but they'll be in a perfect ratio. You could have the perfect ratio when you get sufficient amount, and if there were toxic level, you could have a perfect ratio at a toxic level. So, mm -hmm. So this ratio uh, is in a way bewildering, but okay, if we go down to what we eat and so on, it can be used. But I rather go for how much do we need mm -hmm. in weight or in number of molecules that you eat. And as I said, we get plenty of omega-6, so we don't care if uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you should even decrease it a bit because there ca can be some signs on a far too high intake that promotes inflammatory disorders too mm -hmm. much. But if you go to EPA, DHA, it's the n number of molecules, the amount, half a gram, if you're a normal citizen, we can come back to that maybe later. But the ratio between DHA and EPA is not essential as long as you get enough of both. Okay. But for example, when we look at pregnant females, we say they should at least have two to 300 milligrams of DHA, and if we then add up to 500 milligrams in total, she should have a bit more DHA than EPA, so the ratio sure. should be about one, but it doesn't count that much as long as we get enough of the two mm -hmm. things. So I don't go that much for ratios, but, but uh, uh, if I would say that in, in supplements, uh, as long as you get enough, it's of no concern. But if you're just at the limit, then the ratio should be in favor of DHA.